So guys, I've just got back from Motorcycle Live at the NEC in Birmingham in the UK to take a look at the brand new 2023 Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650. In this video, I'm just gonna go over the specifications of the bike, go over my thoughts on what I think of it as a first initial viewing, and slightly compare it to the uh, the Meteor 350 as well, and the differences and whether it's improved in certain areas and how it's different in certain areas. So if you're interested in the new Super Meteor 650, stay tuned, let's get into it. The Meteor 350, we start off with the engine in that, it has a single 349cc engine with 20 horsepower and 27 newton meters of torque. So the power figures on the 350 have possibly been wanting a little bit more for a while now. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice single, I do enjoy that engine, it's very nice for a single engine, and if you're after a low-powered, good-valued, cruiser-styled motorcycle, then the 350 is a really good option. Now, moving on to the Super Meteor 650, what's the engine like in the 650? You have a 648 cc parallel twin but with a 270 degree crank on it so mimicking the feel basically of a v-twin engine um, it's going to feel a lot like riding a v-twin engine however there are benefits of of having the parallel twin so why use a parallel twin in a cruiser well the, the benefits of a parallel twin are it's more compact fewer moving parts it's therefore a bit of a lighter engine and also lowers the costs of of making the engine so it makes it more affordable for you and really slightly more of a, an efficient and more balanced motorcycle. Whether you prefer that over a V-twin really is personal preference, but that is a few of the benefits of a parallel twin. The 270 degree crank really does help the parallel give it some real character, which may be missing from a from a standard parallel twin. So yeah, an, an interesting motor. I have ridden it in the Interceptor 650 and it is a peach. It's a really, really nice, yeah, 650cc parallel twin. Putting out 46 horsepower and 52 newton meters of torque. So you're pretty much doubling the horsepower and newton meter figures of the 350. So they've gone for it, Royal Enfield. It's a really nice step up in power for, for the new 650. 50 Super Meteor. Now, when you see the bike in person, you can definitely notice it's a more of a Meteor bike than the, uh, the 350. It's a bigger bike, it, it's more substantial, it feels like more of a proper cruiser, heading into sort of middleweight cruiser, cruiser range. So on to suspension. On the rear, you have twin shocks with 101 millimeters of travel and adjustable preload on the rear. So if you have a pillion on the rear or you're loading luggage on, which you may want to on this slightly larger CC motorcycle, you go touring, etc., you can adjust the preload on the rear. So that's nice and useful. Up front suspension, um, a nice feature. Whether it's completely necessary, I'm not 100% sure, but I would definitely rather have it than not. It's got upside down forks up front, so 43 millimeters with 120 millimeters of travel. As I say, I'm not too sure whether it's completely necessary having the upside down forks on the middleweight cruiser, but rather have it than not, um, nice spec Royal Enfield. Quickly go over the brakes, not too much for change, slightly bigger brakes. We've got a single 320 millimeter disc up front with a two piston caliper. And on the rear, you have a single 300 millimeter disc with, again, a two piston floating caliper on the rear. Right, getting through the stats, onto weight. So the Meteor 350 wet weight is 191 kilograms. That is very light for a cruiser motorcycle. As we know, cruiser motorbikes generally tend to be on the heavier side. So the 350, given it single engine, it's a light, light cruiser. The new 350 is pushed up a bit. It's 50 kilograms more, so it's 241 kilograms wet weight. Still, I don't I think that's a bad figure, doesn't seem too heavy to me. And as I say, when you see it in the person, it does seem like a more substantial motorbike, so nothing to worry about on the weight figures. Fuel capacity, guys, it's a 15.7 litre fuel tank. Very similar to the 350, actually. The 350 is a 15 litre fuel tank. So not much more capacity there. I was expecting a little bit more. However, thinking about it, 
I ride a Triumph Speedmaster and that's a 1200cc engine so yeah I think actually that's fairly adequate and, and more than enough really for a 650cc middleweight cruiser. Much more than that you'll be adding weight and you'll you'll be changing the aesthetics and looks of the of the bike as well so I think you'll be able to given it's a 650 it's quite an efficient engine I should think you'll get good uh, mileage out of that tank. Okay coming on to seat height getting a bit more interesting now the seat height for the 350 is 765 millimeters now the new 650 is 740 millimeters so 25 millimeters lower it's not that much but that is a bit lower now it adds into another feature with the 650. The new 650 has proper forward, oh you can't see my hands, don't know I'm doing it down there, forward style foot pegs. It's much more of a cruiser riding position. You've got forward foot pegs, lower seat height, nice high handlebars. It really does embody the cruiser style, laid back, traditional feel of a cruiser motorcycle. Much more so than the 350 I feel. So guys, something that I find quite exciting about the new 650, uh, at the show there were three different models on display. So there was a sort of black, like dark grey, black model. Stripped down, slightly bobber-esque, looked really cool, really like the look of that. There was also going up a bit, slightly more specked out, I would say, in the middle of the range with the pillion seat on the rear. Really nice spec as well, it's like a green, with gold pinstripes breaking that up and then a nice black paintwork. It really is in the flesh. It's a cool, cool looking new cruiser, which looks really good. Moving on, they have a like a touring specked out model on show as well. It was like a white and red paint scheme, full touring. So you had a screen at the front, pillion seat with a backrest for the pillion. Um, you had highway bars with fog lights on the highway bars. Also, they had sort of semi um, floorboards, I would describe it as. Not full floorboards, but half and half wide foot pegs for the rider and the pillion as well. So really cool. You can spec it out into a real old school sort of cruiser style. On the rear of the uh, the red and white, I'm going to call it for now because I don't know the official name of the paintwork, but of the touring model, the red and white one, there's a luggage rack as well just behind the, the passenger backrest, so you know for, for touring etc, more luggage room which is obviously really really helpful. So overall thoughts from the show and just having walked around the, uh, the 650, there's a lot of hype going around it, I'm really impressed. I think it's really really nice looking not too big often cruisers are large motorcycles it's not too large there's a definite difference between the 350 and the 650 i think you will notice that for sure in person when you see the bike also want to note i think royal enfield have upped their their quality finish quality a bit not that it's too bad to start off with but on this new 650 the whole the whole bike, everything seems to just fit together really well and some nice quality materials on the bike. Another note is the uh, the dash, so it has a LCD analog dash, very nice, simple, single round dial up front, which is just perfect for a style of cruiser like that. You don't want to overcomplicate it too much. They do also have their Trippier navigation turn by turn signaling next to that if you, if you wish to spec that as well for navigation, so that's nice and handy. On to price, now they haven't released the price yet, but the 350 is £3,749. I'm not going to hazard a guess uh, at what the 650 is going to be yet, I'm afraid. It's not going to be over £10,000, I highly doubt. So yeah, I think it's a really, really good prospect if you're in the market for a cruiser, you don't want something too big and a great aggressive price as well. Cannot wait to ride it. Many thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, Hope you like the vid and I shall see you in the next one. Ciao Bella.